Hi, welcome to this video. My name is Carmen and I'm the designer behind New Leaf Designs and this video is especially for the members of Team Free Spirit for the Sassenach Kahl, so the Sassenach Knit Along, which is the first knit along hosted by Escapius and I'm very very excited for it to start. There is just under a month to go. It starts on February 25th. Third, um, and today I have some tips for Team Free Spirit. So for the knit along, there are three official kits, uh, which are called Circium Rosa and Erika. And Circium means thistle, Rosa means rose, and Erika means heather. Um, and the inspiration behind all of the colorways, you can hear all about that in my last video or in my blog post, which I'll link down below. Um, and here I have the Claire cushion for you in the Rosa colorway. So during the knit along, we will be knitting a set of two cushions and this is the second one. So this is Claire and the first cushion that we'll be knitting is Jamie. Um, and I have a swatch of the Circium colorway right here. So let me just put that over this cushion so you can see. So the Circium has some more vibrant brick red. Um, and actually many of you were wondering how the back <laughs> looks. So let me just show you that this time. Um, so I knit this swatch back and forth, which is not how you'll be knitting the pillow, but, um, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's not very exciting, but, um, yeah, so that's the Circean colorway. And I also have a swatch for the Jamie cushion. So you can see, um, the big kind of tartan inspired print here and some fair isle patterns, a thistle, some more tartan, and yeah, so that is the Jamie cushion, which we'll be knitting first. So we have the three official colorways, and if you have a Circium kit, you can call yourself Team Circium, and, and also for Team Rosa and Team Erica. But uh, if those colorways did not really speak to you, or for some other reason you're not following any of those colorways, you can call yourself Team Free Spirit. And I have several, I have many options for Team Free Spirit. Um, and it's all very, very exciting. So um, I want to start off by mentioning the Metropolis color pack um, because then I can also <laughs> show you this amazing box that's beside me and uh, for any of the colorway possibilities I can show you the tiny little yarn balls. So here is the Metropolis color pack by Scapies. And so Metropolis is the yarn that we are using for the Sassenach Kahl. And a Metropolis comes in 50 gram balls that have, um, I think, 200 meters on each ball. Uh, but they also have this color pack. So um, this color pack has little 10 gram balls of each of the 80 colors. And it's, it's amazing. It's like this uh, painter's palette box. And I just love it. So this box is enough to knit both of the cushions with. So the Metropolis Color Pack is a solid option for knitting uh, the Sassenach Kahl cushions. Because in the uh, official yarn kits you'll have 610 grams of yarn, you'll have six colors, each of which have two balls uh, or 100 grams, uh, except for color A, um, which in most of the colorways is the lightest shade. So you have A, B, C, um, which in most colorways is the lightest shade uh, are the light shades and DEF, which are the dark shades. And I'm gonna talk more about that later. And A 
is, for example, here the background of these clovers and for the rosa colorway that is also a very light color. So all of the colors use 100 grams except color A, um, which the, the urine kit contains 110 grams of that. So you will need a little bit more of color A. But of course the colors A, B, C, D, E, F don't really <laughs> <laughs> apply if you have the Metropolis color pack because you have 80 colors so you have a colors A to Z three times <laughs> so what are the options for you if you uh, choose to knit with the Metropolis color pack first off you're going to have lots of yarn left over because the yarn kit uh, contains 610 grams as I just said and that is calculated with a margin so you will be able to also knit the swatch and you will probably still have left over and depending on your gauge I mean of course I hope that you will knit a gauge swatch and that you will try to reach the right gauge but <laughs> I know um, I know lots of people will still knit with a different gauge, so depending on that, you might have more or less yarn left over. Uh, but 610 grams is the kind of um, rule of thumb for this uh, project. The Vitropolis Color Pack contains 800 grams because you have 80 balls um, that are each 10 grams. But of course, um, it's a little bit difficult to piece those colors together and as of now I don't know yet uh, how many grams each chart uses so um, ideally I would have weighed my yarns each time I started a new chart and then I would have have the uh, exact grams that I used for my gauge for each of the colors within the chart but obviously no I didn't do that so you're gonna have to puzzle a little bit but if you're like me then um, I think you'll enjoy that actually <laughs> so let's talk about if you want to use the Metropolis color pack and I'm going to open it for you because there are two sides and and it has this kind of cardboard insert that I'm going to take out and I'm going to show you all of the deliciousness that is inside. <laughs> Look at this! Oh, I want this to be the screenshot. <laughs> um, Right, so you have all of these delicious colors and technically you could just grab a color and knit, 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 knit. But I'm going to give you some advice because um, there are some charts in the cushion designs that are so large that um, I don't think you'll be able to do that with one of the balls per color. So for example, if we look at the clover panel, it's a really large panel. Um, and I would suggest looking at the big charts first, and then picking some colors that go together and use those as the um, background color. Uh, so you would, you could choose um, to light colors that are really really similar and use those for the background and having said that I don't know if 20 grams would be enough I think so but it's just a guess at this point so the colors I'm holding here are Coda 24 and Almaty 56 so I'm holding those colors and the way that I would um, knit that chart is not uh, one round with this, one round with this, but I would stick to the um, Fair Isle color transition rules. So for the Fair Isle, um, let me show you. 
in Fair Isle, you usually take the center three or five rounds and swap out a color. And you can see that here, so the background color, it starts as this kind of mustard yellow, and then uh, we use a very light beige white, and then we use blue for the center line. And this works really well for this geometrical pattern. A, a really bright center line would not look as good in these clovers. But, of course, go ahead. But what I mean is that um, off the top of my head, I don't really know uh, how many rounds this is. I think 30 or 32. So you could say, okay, um, I'm going to do the center 10 rounds with this and the, the rounds before and after I'm going to do that with this. You could say that. And similarly for the pattern color, so I'm, I'm talking about the background color, which here is the beige, and the pattern color, um, which is the very dark green here. For the pattern color, you could also use two colors that are very, very similar. Uh, such as these, and this is uh, Bucharest, uh, yes, Bucharest and Glasgow, so that is one and two, um, colors one and two. You could use those for the clovers because um, that would look really nice. And then another tip for the background, because even though the pattern color looks best when it's a solid color, the background, you can use some varieties in there. So let's say you have a dark pattern color, so the background needs to be light. Um, and you could, you could also go for a kind of sunset um, gradient in the background. So you could, um, you could go for a really beautiful sunset fade um, so I think there were 32 rounds so you would use each of these for uh, eight rounds um, and see how beautiful that is and if you pick this really dark pattern color that would contrast well with any of them or maybe even this one, which is 53 Santiago. That would contrast really well with each of them. Um, and these are Toulouse 30, Alexandria 34, um, Bangalore 52, and Dubai 47. So the easiest way is for bigger charts to pick colors that are very, very similar but you can also be more creative and go for gradients like that. And I'm going specifically into detail about this chart because I know this one is the most difficult one because it is very visual. Um, if you were to look at this chart, you could make that work very well by dividing it into three sections. So choosing a color uh, pair for the first one, color pair for the second one and a color pair for the third one and um, because it doesn't look it doesn't need to look cohesive um, so that's very easy to just use any color you like as long as it contrasts um, and you don't need that to be one big cohesive chart the same goes for the center panel of the Jamie cushion. Perhaps I'll put a picture of the Jamie cushion up uh, instead because I think that's easier to see than my little swatch. So uh, here we also have a tartan pattern that is divided with horizontal lines and you could very easily divide that into several sections and just just use different colors. They don't need to look cohesive. Another big chart that I think you would um, need to really pick colors for is the thistle chart. So I'll also show you 
up on the um, the big cushion, so the thistle chart, because um, I think you will have enough uh, for the pattern color with just one ball of the pattern color for the kind of stem and then one for the flower um, but I think the background color cannot be done with just one 10 gram ball so you would have to um, think about that but you can also because you can you can imagine that okay thistle um, if, if you look at a field of thistles maybe the background and the lower section is kind of green is is the grass and the background in the top section is maybe blue like the sky you, you could you could make it even more visual like that um, so, you, so you can play around and with lots of the other charts you um, I think you can just use as many colors as in the original charts and just pick um, some colors that you like uh, and I think you will have enough with the tan gram balls for that um, and then I'm just giving you loads of tips here this may overwhelm you so just come back to it if you feel up to it <laughs> so uh, and for the final fair isle chart on Jamie's cushion so that's coming up in week five um, you see that it's already it already has a center band of this other pattern color and other background color but uh, I'm not sure if the wider bands um, above and below can be done with just one ball of the background color and one ball of the pattern color so what you could do because this is a fair isle pattern you could um also um you could also swap out the background color like uh how do i explain this you could make it wider or you could even like usually it is the center three rounds or the center five rounds um but the thing is that it just needs to be symmetrical so you could do the center seven rounds or the center three rounds being this color and then two rounds below and two rounds above being another set of background and pattern color so there is a lot to play here um, and I think you just have to be careful with the very visual charts such as the clovers and the rows here that you kind of uh, pick colors that work well together um, for example those that are very very similar even if it is green and blue I mean if you look at those far away you won't be able to tell the difference as much um, so just yeah <laughs> I want you to think about those charts first and set aside the colors that you want to use for those and then the rest of them um, just play with them and ideally I would um, divide them into light and dark so you have enough contrast uh, but yeah you can just have a play with it uh, so that is all of the information on the Scapius color pack um, and I am seeing lots of people um, grabbing their color packs in anticipation of the cow and I very much look forward to seeing your versions I think they will be amazing and um, yeah I love how adventurous you all are um, so now I want to talk about some of the inspirational colorways so you might have seen these being shared already I have come up with three new colorways um, that will work very well um, 
and that I hope will inspire you. So first up, we have Viola, and I think this might be my new favorite. So Viola, I will put the inspirational image on the screen for you right now. So it is um, inspired by violets, and specifically the violets on Bunny Prince Charlie's uh, coat. So in the Outlander series, which this whole knit along is heavily inspired by, Bunny Prince Charlie is, um, he's always wearing very luscious, uh, silks or embroidered jackets um, and I think it's mostly season two that we see him and in season two um, Jamie and Claire they live in Paris you see a lot of uh, Versailles uh, like in the palace it's it's beautiful it's it's lush it's it's just wow <laughs> and uh, this colorway is is inspired by Bonnie Prince Charlie and um, I will put some inspirational images on the screen that inspired this colorway so I noticed kind of a coral theme and also lots of teal blues and that's what inspired the viola colorway and I am holding them in order right now from A, B, C to D, E, F. Um, if you want to follow the charts in the pattern. So when choosing these new colorways, I always, I always choose three light and three dark and I make sure that all of the lights and darks contrast well with each other and to check this um, I recommend taking a picture of your choice and then converting that to black and white and I usually do that on Instagram uh, because it's very easy to swipe between filters and find a black and white one um, so yes A B C D E F um, that is the viola colorway and I'm going to read out the colorway numbers for you so A is Dubai 47 B is Leeds 46 um, C is Suwon 18 D is Ankara 10 E is Bucharest 1 and F is, what is this, Lagos? No, it's Rabat 41. Um, and I just think this colorway is chef's kiss, amazing. Um, I hope to see one of you knitting this because I love it. And yeah, it is called Viola because Bonnie Prince Charlie wore a coat with violets embroidered on his on the coat um okay up to the second one which is called dahlia and okay actually for the second one and the third one dahlia and solana um there's something different going on so for dahlia which of course means dahlia and solana which means nightshade and does a technic it's not literally nightshade but nightshade uh, the flower is part of the Solana say uh, so the family of Solana and I thought it was a gorgeous name so I thought why not um, and Dahlia is inspired by the dress <laughs> as I like to call it so I'll put a picture up on the screen of the dress that Claire wears to this kind of garden party in Versailles it is a kind of well it's a kind of dull brown but uh, there are so many golden and pink and purple details on it that it's just it's it's a stunning dress and you know if I think of stunning dresses I usually don't think of the, this kind of latte macchiato shade of brown but um, I actually really love it so of course I had to base a colorway on this and the brown from the dress I translated that to colorway 66 
Copenhagen and also a bit of Valencia 62. So um, the Dahlia colorway is this one and ABC are here and DEF are here. And so for this colorway and also Solana, I have switched around the lights and darks. So ABC are the dark ones and DEF are the light ones. And that's because um, um, I put these colors into my chart maker. Um, and I thought that this way around it looked much better because uh, the yellow gets more playtime this way. Um, so as color A we have Bogota 50, color B is Santiago 53, C is Valencia 62, D is Alexandria 34, E is 40, Dhaka and F is Copenhagen 66. And the same inverted color scheme goes for Solana. So uh, this was inspired actually by someone in the Scapius Facebook group who said, uh, oh, I'm gonna do my own version, but like make it gothic. And I was like, that's a great idea. Um, so it's gonna be very dark with purples and grays and I, I love this combination and um, it is kind of inspired by um, if you know the story um, of Outlander I think it happens in season one where Claire goes to this village and there's this boy who ate a poisoned flower first they think he's possessed by the devil but Turns out he ate a poisonous plant, and I think that was Lil Lily of the Valley. Um, but Nightshade is also poisonous, and Nightshade is purple, and Lily of the Valley is white. So I thought, you know, to uh, when I think of a dark colorway, like poisonous colorway, uh, I don't want it to be white and light, and <laughs> so. That's how the dark and purple came to be. And also, if you think of season two, also in Paris, um, Claire, at one point, she wears this cape, this, this hooded jacket, um, and it's a very dark shade of blue, and I think it's very close to this one. No, it's, it's more, it's darker, I think. Um, and there are red vines embroidered on it. And I just, I love that. Um, so that also kind of served as the inspiration for this. So as color A, we have 70, 70 Cairo. For B, we have 80 Hamburg. Um, for C, we have Glasgow um, 2. Um, D is Lima 55. E is Saint, uh, no, not Petersburg, Johannesburg, 54, and F is Jakarta, 71. So I think that will be a stunning colorway as well. Um, and I can't wait to see what other colorways you come up with. So there, there are so many possibilities. Um, and really, all you need to do if you want to create a colorway of your own is to pick three light shades and three dark shades. So you could just, you know, I'm sure most of you won't have a box like this, but if you're uh, on a website browsing for yarn and you pick three light ones, and three dark ones, like boom, you have your own colorway that will work. But I'm going to give you some extra advice, of course, because I'm like that. So picking three light colors and three dark colors will work in 100% of the cases. Um, and to make it even more to your liking is um, to pick a chart that you like best, for example, if you like the clovers best, if you like the rose best, or maybe 
one of the tartan patterns in Jamie's cushion. Um, then choose your favorite combination for that. Um, for example, if you like the clovers, um, I can tell you already the, the colors for this one is the background is A. I think I already said that, that um, the kind of lightest color is A, except for the two new colorways, Salon and Dahlia. And then the clover is D, so that's the first one of the dark colors. Um, so if you go by the clover band and see like, oh, I actually do like this very dark green that I use for Rosa, which is 26 Deepak. But I want something else for the background color. Perhaps I want a blue instead of this um, white, or perhaps I want a pink. Then you can have that as your color A, because that is the background of the clovers. Um, yeah, but... <laughs> and I could go on and on and on giving you loads of tips and tricks and advice uh, but honestly I think that would be very overwhelming so um, I'm gonna leave it at this and I'm going to wish you loads of fun putting your colorway together um, and do tag me in your photos of, hey, this is my colorway. Do you think it will work? Um, and, um, and I will tell you if the colors don't contrast enough because um, that can really take out the joy of color work knitting. You need to have contrasting colors. Otherwise, the patterns just won't show up as well and that would be a shame for all your hard work um so yes do go in the escapees facebook groups whether you're in the dutch group or the international group and tag me in your colorway choice whether you have the balls of yarn in front of you or whether you have screenshots of the escapees website of their uh the escapees metropolis colors and Ask me if they will work and I will be honest um, because the last thing I want is for you to knit up this whole cushion and then you won't be able to see the pattern um, and I think that is the biggest kind of trap if you put together your own colorway and for example you only choose like colors that you really like like oh I like pink I like blue I like green um, and then if you don't really pay attention to the light and darkness of each color, then you will have a really pretty palette, but no contrast. So, so that is really something to think about, like, oh, you know, instead of this pink, or I could move this pink to the light section, and choose a really dark burgundy because that will look really nice and you could choose a really dark blue and a really dark green and ta-da you have contrast um so it's really just taking a look at your yarn choices and and seeing if they have enough contrast. Um, right, I'm going to leave you with that before I ramble on for another hour. Um, I'm having a lot, of, a lot of fun doing this already, so I hope you will too. And yes, do tag me in your photos, and I hope to see your colorways very, very soon. All right, have fun. Bye-bye.